hello there kitties, I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch, and today I've got a interesting device for a little peek inside. It won't be a uh, complete turndown, it won't be a disassembly, because I want to keep it working. This is the T-Man Combi Braille 35 braille uh, printer and uh, and terminal so it's an uh, accessibility device and I have taken a look inside and you will be surprised you will be just gobsmacked at how beautiful it is built so without further ado to the bench. So I've got this thing of beauty and I drive forever from the local Fab Lab. And uh, there's some very interested uh, high quality electronic engineering inside that I would absolutely love to show you. So let's get a screwdriver. And there is a lot of screws on the bottom part. Let's unscrew it. The enclosure is made of plastic not metal but it's quality plastic and uh, there's of course the nameplate team on uh, combi brow 45 serial number 99.116.0363 but let's get a better view if I can And as for the connectivity, by the way, take a note of 12 volts DC, 2 amperes. As for the connectivity, it has a uh, parallel port input, parallel port output to the printer, serial. No, not sure if it's input or output. There's also a headphone jack. Then power connector. And that's uh, why I uh, took it apart uh, before. That's bef because I uh, wanted to reverse engineer the power connection. And there's the on-off switch. So, after unscrewing some more of those screws, Some of them are conical head M3 and others are plastic screws. So what do we see here? We can see uh, clearly a thing of beauty and a joy forever. And what does this thing of beauty and a joy forever consist of, you might ask? This block is very intriguing. Because uh, this, is a, uh, this is a piezoelectric uh, driver. And uh, just, just look at uh, all those modules. There's so many of them. like uh, 30 modules here and from uh, what I read doing some research on this unit the, the next uh, five uh, 
modules are control block. So it is called. So on the left uh, we would have this control block, then a uh, separator module, and then the proper text modules, and uh, and this combobulates quite nicely, and I would like not to damage this whole assembly. If possible, I will disconnect it from the rest of the device and show you how beautiful it is built. An impressive Example of precision electronic engineering. All those modules have a driver PCB with surface mount components that is connected uh, via a um, narrow raster, <laughs> narrow raster uh, pins and headers to the common backplane uh, you can see here. And also worth noticing is that uh, every subsequent module has something like the input uh, and output port. Like they are connected either in a ring or daisy chained something like uh, on the SPI bus. And there are wires going to the driver itself. The driver drives the eight, uh, eight dots um, that rise and fall. Those dots, uh, if, you, if you run a finger through, through those dots, you will feel the you will feel the flats and uh, <coughs> protruding uh, parts. That's how braille code works. Tested 2511. Hmm. Doesn't look like a date code. I will now carefully put it aside. By the way, take a look at those connectors. Again, thing of beauty, joy forever, real deal professional electronics. And the whole device is full of them. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you about, um, about this uh, assembly is that uh, there are three threaded rounds made of brass going all the way through all of those uh, modules and that's how they are put together. Discombobulating yet another ribbon cable This uh, does not look good. Uh, if we take a closer look, uh, looks like the the cable has been crushed by uh, something else. This goes to the switch module. If I can liberate the switch module from here. Again, I don't want to destructively discombobulate this device, but if it doesn't want to go, eh, then I will not try to pry it out. Look at that thing. It's um, It has a sticker. Visual, okay. 
September 1999. So the quality control sticker is from 1999. So uh, that would uh, that would check out with the probably the date code on the serial number. This is a uh, board with five uh, buttons using using probably the cherry switches uh, right here. Those venerable cherry switches uh, so adored um, by uh, the, by the mechanical keyboard aficionados. Let's see what kind of switches we have here. And hey, hey, hey. look at the the marking uh, in the in the copper layer. It's quite nice. Oh, look at that! An overgrown tact switch, engineered for reliability. None of that little text switch rubbish. They went whole hog. And there's also... There's also one more thing that uh, Dave Jones has a certain fetish for. Look at that. Threaded insert. <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed if I uh, if I didn't notice that uh, it's the M3 conical head uh, screws that uh, attach this board. So let's put it back together. There's uh, one threaded standoff uh, in the center of the device and one another right here. Also worth noting because uh, I uh, found uh, two M3 screws when, uh, when taking uh, the bottom uh, part of the device. Here's the last one. I think I might form this uh, this ribbon really flat. So, in the center we've got a 12 volt battery. It is that. It's that, Jim. It's that, Jim. Looks like a filter or a capacitor or something like that. A uh, PCB fuse. But there's something real remarkable uh, about this fuse that I'd like to show you. If we take a closer look. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's placed it's placed uh, in a socket, just like uh, old uh, transistors and vacuum tubes were. There's another one. Look at that. So uh, if you if you do surface and uh, on this thing, and uh, it has a fuse blown, you can just replace it without soldering. Loveliness. 
That's pure loveliness. Lots of thought has been put into this device. There's a, there's a uh, lettuce. Uh, not sure if it's FPGA or some uh, micro controller. I guess that uh, Dave would uh, would offer some uh, advice on this thing. Yeah, it's some more chips. S plus um, uh, made in '96. Might be a super cap. Oh, oh my goodness! You can't see it, but uh, yeah, I just noticed that this uh, this cap is 10 microfarad, 350 volts. So this is probably a uh, a voltage converter for high voltage and there is some circuitry powered from high voltage in this device probably those electrostatic those uh, piezoelectric uh, drivers I'm not exactly sure but uh, it's very interesting what made it into this device. RP7, RP8, this looks like um, a uh, resistor ladder. 74 HCT 90. 9115D. Uh, Interesting. And there's something like a voltage regulator here. And let's take a look at the back panel PCB. Still some, uh, still some uh, CMOS uh, ICs on that. Then the parallel and serial interfaces. And of course the power connector. Again, a uh, quality control uh, sticker. And another sticker. BR94 back V2.03 Made of metal and uh, the standoffs are used for attaching the back panel to the printed circuit board And uh, now that I mentioned the back panel and the power connector, just uh, one moment, please. Let me grab the schematic. This is uh, the DIN socket from uh, from the socket soldering side. like looking at this uh, this way let's get a close-up on this thing uh, you can see now you can uh, you can probably see if you take a closer look that those two pins are the ground then those two pins would be connected together and this one pin would be separate and if we use the continuity check yes indeed those are connected together this one is separate is 
still separate, but uh, they pass. Uh, they are connected together through through dials, and uh, those numbers would be the contacts on uh, on this teeny tiny lovely connector. So uh, there is the common line uh, fed from the fed uh, from the power switch that's powered from uh, from this pin from the battery and from those pins so they have to be on the same voltage otherwise the thing would not work or blow up but those uh, those pins are put on a uh, separate uh, non-switched line. Goes to one, two, and three. Which is quite interesting. And with the information uh, from uh, reverse engineering this thing, I can connect it uh, to a uh, CCCV power supply, constant current, constant voltage, and test the device. I've never fired it up. And in order to make an actual use of it, I will have to have a uh, computer with a uh, parallel and or serial uh, interface that uh, I could uh, use some software on the computer to talk to this device and that software I already know that uh, it is uh, it is freely available for the GNU slash Linux users as a package named uh, BRLTTY then the Braille, uh, Braille terminal, Braille teletype and I wonder if I could actually be able to make this loveliness work with my laptop And uh, and now I have to be extra careful, avoiding the mistakes. Yes, the, the connector is close to the voltage converter and that means that uh, on, uh, on this back plane we probably have a high voltage bus. Beware! Something you could power Nixie tubes from. Let's make sure if if all the connectors are here. I I will leave the battery connector disconnected. Though it probably doesn't harm leaving it on. It's dead. It's dead, Jim. 
though uh, there must uh, there must also be some way to charge the battery now that I think of it maybe it's for the r55 resistor or for something on the, on this part there must be a way to charge the battery otherwise it would not make sense So I think that this line might actually go to the battery charger circuit. So let's put it back together. That's the M3. And of course, this device being a Braille printer, it has markings in Braille on, uh, on the enclosure. Goes without saying. back and then forward Is there a gap? I don't like no uh, that's how it should be. I thought I was getting something wrong, but no. So that would be a beautiful example of electronic engineering from uh, from the late 1990s and a lot of uh, a lot of great components have uh, made it into into this device and I can bet my ass that it's still gonna be operational and by the way how this thing was used on uh, on this part the user placed a uh, computer keyboard and had the braille uh, printer right in front of the keyboard let me show you
change the view if uh, if the camera doesn't act up again and that's how it was done And uh, those buttons, um, they are used to control uh, which part of the line is printed because uh, the, the printer allows for 40 characters. But in uh, text interfaces you typically use uh, 80 character length per line, that's the um, that's the VT100 uh, standard that uh, has become uh, really widespread uh, on uh, POSIX compliant uh, operating systems. So, uh, without, uh, without uh, being friends with uh, FabLab, I would never have uh, had a chance uh, to show you an interesting uh, example of uh, accessibility tech. Thanks to you all at FabLab. And by the way, I will be there um, on, uh, on Saturday and uh, maybe I will take some, um, some footage uh, that will make it to my channel. We'll see. For the moment, see you next time. Bye.